Good afternoon, everybody. This is Betsy Veldman for Paper Tray Inc. I hope you're enjoying all of the Stamp Affair activities so far. I am your host for this hour's challenge, which is mixing and matching pattern papers. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some guidelines and tips and tricks for mixing and matching papers. So I'm going to show you some projects today and that have all feature a mix of pattern papers and the papers that I'm using in all of my projects today are from the Mood Mix pattern paper pack which I designed specifically for Stamp Affair and it was included in your Stamp Affair um, packs, your kits, if you ordered the Stamp Affair kit. It is a great collection of lots of different prints. There are large and small prints, multicolor prints, tone on tone, stripes, chevrons, uh, large and small florals, just about anything you need for lots of mix and match possibilities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some projects that I made using these papers and kind of tell you just uh, why I think the mix works and things to look for when you're mixing your own pattern papers and then at the end of the video I am going to be showing you 10 different um, paper mixes from this pattern paper collection just kind of as an inspirational tool and a jump start for you for your projects when you are uh, working on mixing prints. Okay, so the first uh, guideline that I want to talk to you about today as far as mixing prints is mixing scales. Um, it's kind of a rule of threes. You want to choose uh, prints, three different prints. If you're working with three different prints, you can choose a large scale, a medium scale, and a small scale. Now you can see on this project here, I have my large scale floral which is of course my large scale print. My medium scale is the chevron and then I have this small floral here. And you can also see that I used them in their same quantity as well. So the large print is my largest piece of pattern paper. My medium print is my medium as far as size and of course the print size. And then um, my small print is the smallest just kind of an accent piece. So you can see how I've used them kind of small, medium, large, both in print size and actual physical size. And then what also um, helps on this card, I believe, is that there is some white space, which gives your eye kind of a, just a space to rest. So that is why um, those patterns work nicely together. Same with this card. This is another great example of different scales. Here I have my large scale multicolor print and then I have a medium scale which is a chevron and then I chose another chevron which is I, it works to combine multiple um, sizes of the same type of print as long as there's enough contrast. Here you can see I chose this uh, small chevron and actually layered it over the larger chevron and that's a great thing to keep in mind too is some of these prints they can be trimmed down and used more as accents which I did here I'll show you the full size sheet of this pattern paper. It's a little busy, a little overwhelming, but you can definitely, uh, you know, consider trimming it down, which it makes great, um, great accent uh, strips. Same with the black stripe that's at the bottom of this card. Um, this print is also very overwhelming on its own. It can almost make your recipient probably feel a little dizzy, <laughs> but it, I love black and white stripes. Uh, just black and white prints really of any um, type can really add a great little pop and give your projects almost kind of a trendy, um, updated, modern feel. So again, this print is oh, very overwhelming in its full size, but it's really great to think about trimming down and using for borders or just as small accent pieces like I did along the bottom here. And one other thing I want to talk about with these two cards is um, color. You can see here where my larger prints in both cards kind of were the, the jumping off point for the color schemes. Um, when you have a large scale print, a lot of times it's multicolored. Multi so just use that as your color inspiration and pull your um, supporting prints, we'll call them, based on the colors in your main print. So here, the yellow chevron works perfectly with this print pulling out of the yellow flowers and then also this small floral here pulls from the pinks and the oranges also found in the large print. And the same with this one. My large print was kind of the starting point and then I pulled from that color wise. 
I was able to pull some yellows and use this. And then this small chevron, of course, uses all of the colors from, from the main print. And then the black and white is just kind of an accent. The next concept I want to talk about is tone-on-tone -tone and single color prints. Tone-on-tone uh, -tone prints are those uh, that have this uh, design done in all kind of tones of the same color. For example, this aqua mist floral is a great example of a tone-on-tone -tone print. And then there are single color prints which feature just kind of a basic design done in either usually just one color along with white. And these types of prints are really great for mixing and matching. They're super easy. It's a great place to start if you're a beginner or kind of skittish about mixing prints. Uh, tone on tone and single color prints are a great place to start. You can kind of think of them as solids with a kick. And they can also be a, a great supporting role for your stamping. So here's a project I created using several of the tone on tone and single color prints from the Mood Mix uh, paper pack. Um, I, I just chose uh, several of the prints and kind of trimmed them into strips and put them on the side of my project. And then I went ahead and stamped a pretty sentiment using the stacked statements, uh, stamp set and dies. And I just used, uh, pulled out the colors from the prints and just really worked to pull everything together. The last thing I want to talk about today is white space. For my last project, I used all of the prints from the Mood Mix collection on a single project. And that's a lot of print, and there are a lot of ways that this could go really bad. But in this instance, it works, and I think it's because of the white space. Now, when I say white space, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's white. In this case, the white space is actually the craft in the background. White space is just a term used to refer to a place for the eye to rest, a solid area of color, and it can be white or it can be a color. Like I said, it's just a solid area, a place for the eye to rest. And it also provides a nice contrast for all of the different prints. And I think another thing that makes this work is that the design is pretty straightforward and pretty uniform. If I had just taken all of these prints and just randomly layered them, it would not be as successful. But since the design is very linear and very straightforward and gives your eye a lot of direction along with the white space in the background, you can mix all sorts of different um, prints and patterns successfully. Well that wraps up this little tutorial with uh, tips and tricks for mixing and matching your pattern papers. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're planning on playing along with this hour's challenge for the Stamp of Fair festivities. Uh, before we go, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have put together 10 different uh, pattern paper combinations based on the Mood Mix uh, collection and those will be coming up on your screen shortly so enjoy those and I hope they provide you with a little bit of inspiration for your projects. Thanks for watching. This has been Betsy Veldman for Paper Tray Inc.